To say that I've used numerous single-use disposable ubiroscopes over the years would be an understatement. For instance, I've used this one, which is a no-name, I can't even remember the name of this scope. I would not recommend it. Or I've also used this OTU scope that was being resold through Bard many years ago. I will link my review of this scope in the video description I recorded it back in 2019, I believe. And my former favorite, the Dornier Access Ubiroscope. I've tried them. That's just a few of them. I've tried even more, but these are what I have on hand. My current favorite, this is something that I tried recently, and I've here's my biased view of one case. My current favorite is this scope by Vathin, V-A-T-H-I-N, another scope made in China. Who uh, I believe it's Hunan Vathin Medical Device Company. You can look them up online. But anyway, I couldn't find much information about it. I used it today. A lot of interesting, neat features that are included in this single scope. And as usual, if I'm being paid to make any of these videos, I would disclose that. I have no financial relationship with Hunan, Vathan, or the companies that is reselling on its behalf, Acquire Medical. No financial relationship. But anyway, just want to give you my first impressions regarding the use of this scope with an N of 1. I was treating recently a 9 millimeter ureteral stone. Now, this patient had a stone that was impacted. His distal ureter, the ureter opening was so tight that initially when I tried to go up with a, a, a reusable ureteroscope, an, an Olympus ureteroscope, I could not get an access sheet through. I could not backload the ureteroscope through the tight ureter opening. You know, when you look into the bladder and you see that UO, it's just super tight. But anyway, I tried. I tried to get the scope up, try to treat the patient under one anesthetic, but unfortunately, I could not get the scope up. Now, I could have dilated the ureter, yes, of course, but I just hate to rip open the ureter with the ureteral dilation balloon. So I took the less traumatic route by putting up a stent. I put up a 4.7 by 26 centimeter stent, let things dilate passively about a month later, brought them back to the OR, and that's when my acquired medical rep was there to have me trial this Vathan single-use ureteroscope. A lot of interesting features, and it's all built into one ureteroscope. So I'm going to go over that from the proximal end to the distal end. As usual, on the proximal end, you plug this into the proprietary processor, which apparently is battery powered and can run for several hours on its own without AC current. And it's the same processor that you use with their disposable cystoscope. So you can supposedly put that processor on a tower and wheel it around the OR into different o operating rooms, or you can use it in the hospital on the floor for their disposable cystoscopes. So plugs right in, just like all the other disposable scopes, nothing exciting there. The connection to the ureteroscope is back here. Now, interestingly, this ureteroscope has a built-in suction, kind of like the Pusen scope ureteroscope. It has a built-in suction. You connect this to your whatever suction device, wall suction or reusable portable suction unit. You connect this here. Now, you you can connect this to suction, but it's not constantly evacuating irrigation fluid from this channel until you press this little button right here. And when you press this button, fluid is being sucked out of the calyx and you can actually compress the calyx. Now, if you obviously, if you have a 200 micron or 365 micron fiber through its 3.6 French working channel, then the irrigation output or outflow is going to be decreased. But this is a very easy button to use. Now, when I hold it, I have seven and a half uh, glove size. So when I hold it like this, it is actually pretty comfortable. Now, it may be, when I have my thumb here and trying to manipulate the scope, my finger is barely kind of reaching the side of the, the, of the button, but it doesn't matter. If, even if I'm pulling on just the side of this button right here, it still works really well. It still sucks really well. Now, this button up here, you I don't know if you can program it, but when I press it, it actually takes a picture 
of whatever image is being shown on the camera at the distal end. So it captures it into the processor and from the processor, you can save it onto a USB. Okay, we talked about the suction, the suction button and the button right here for still image capture. Again, I don't know if you can program it to do other things. Now, this is similar. This control handle, thumb control unit, whatever you want to call it, is similar to other ureteroscopes. When you move it proximally, it deflects the tip up and move it distally, it moves the tip down relative to how you're holding the ureteroscope. Nothing exciting there. What I find interesting is that they, this is actually secured with screws. This is a torque screw, and these are Phillips screws, so it seems to be fairly well made. Again, torque screws on this side as well. Now, what is interesting is that, let me take the sheath off, it comes with a long cover like this to protect the uh, scope. What is interesting is that when you move it into a certain position, for instance, you're busting a stone in the lower pole, you would move it downward and you're holding it like this, you can actually lock the angulation of the scope in this position by sliding this knob or slider to the left. And this will lock the angulation of the scope in that position. Now, to release it, you simply slide it to the right and it bounces back to neutral. Again, move it into position, slide it to the left, and it locks it into position. It really helps to minimize fatigue whenever you are doing a ureteroscopic case and the stone is in the in the lower pole in one spot and you, you want to just stay in that one spot, keep concentrating on pressing the pedal, the, the, the thulium laser or the homium laser pedal, and treat the stone. It relieves your thumb from the constant pressure that you have to, have to apply. So I find this feature to be nice. And of course, while you're locked into position, it doesn't mean that you're stuck here. If you want to, you can still move this thing right here, the angulation arm, even in this locked position. So you're not stuck there. It just, it just pre creates a lot of friction to angulate it, but wherever you move it, it'll stay in that spot. So that's a really nice feature. Again, slide it to the right and it's released into the neutral position. Now it's free moving. Okay, so that is the angulation handle, which I thought was pretty well made. And it's kind of ribbed, so you have good traction and tactile feedback whenever you're using the ureteroscope when you have your gloves on your hands. Okay, let's move it, move a little bit more distally. Over here, this is where your palm would go when you're holding the scope. It's okay. It, I might, I'm, I'm almost never holding it in this spot, so I'm not sure how useful this is here, this grippy surface. If you want to make it grippy, you might, might, might want to move it over to the side and move it over here. So you want to cover this area, extend this, more to the side here and here so that when I'm holding it like this, my palm is not contacting this area. It's contacting the side and my fingers are contacting the side. So if you want to make it grippier, put this stuff over here on the sides. Anyway, free advice to the uh, Vathan reps and Vathan manufa manufacturing. All right, moving on further distally, it has, oh, I love this. It has an adjustable diameter port. I cannot stand the fixed diameter ports. This allows me to adjust the diameter. So it, whether that is a, a, a stone extractor or basket, if you're old school, you're still using a zero tip basket. Uh, pro tip, use a, use a stone extractor and stop using baskets. Thank me later. But anyway, it allows you to put in pretty much whatever diameter instrument that you want to use through this 3.6 French working channel. And you can adjust it so that there's no fluid, no pressure flow coming 
back towards your face or your assistant's face, you're spraying it over the operating room. This allows me to adjust the tightness of this aperture so that there's no leakage. It allows all the irrigation to go distally where I want it to go. And this is the typical lower lock for the inflow irrigation. And looks like you have the model number and maybe the serial number of the scope right here. Moving further distally, another innovation that I haven't seen in other scopes. This black dot tells you that you're in a neutral position. Now, you've all had cases where you're trying to get down to an oblique lower pole calyx and you have to turn your hand in a weird angle and tilt your wrist this way just to get down to the calyx. And once you get there, you want to stay there, but you have to be in that weird awkward position. Well, this helps minimize that because what this does is it actually rotates the tip of the reader scope. So you can move it back and forth. Now you can't tell, but there's a detent when it's in the neutral position versus in the right-handed position, 90 degrees, and also when it's in the left-hand position, 90 degrees, you can feel a detent. So without taking your eyes off the monitor, you can turn this left and right and move the distal tip of the scope left and right. So that minimizes arm wrist fatigue when you have to turn the scope and perform ureteroscopy. A nice innovative feature. And moving distally, nothing exciting here. Just some distance markers on the reader scope. And the distal end, notably, the distal end is not tapered. However, the edges are beveled to make introduction of the reader scope a little bit easier. Now, the angulation of the scope, this is one of my gripes, one of the downsides of the scope. Okay, when I'm turning the scope, I don't want such a wide turning radius. I want the turn to start at the very, very tip immediately, not making this wide arcing turn and then finally getting down. You see, the turning starts down here instead of right at the very tip. I want to be able to turn like that, not like this, okay? Ideally, I want the turn to start at the very tip because you've all seen tight calyces, infundibuli. You want to make that turn immediately without having to make this gradual turn, bounce the scope up into the collecting system just to get down to the lower pole. I want the scope to be able to turn immediately. And if I want to let the fulcrum of the turn gradually make it all the way around but a lot of the scopes turn back here and not here. Anyway, that's really the only gripe that I have for the scope. And as far as the video quality goes, I have no complaints about the video quality. One nice feature of this scope is that within the processor, you have the ability to scale the image. So you typically you're not using the image on a processor. You're connecting the processor through an HDMI input to a larger monitor that typically is mounted off the ceiling and you're viewing the image on the monitor. What I really liked about this processor from Vathan is that you it's a touchscreen. You can scale the image so that it fills the frame of the larger monitor in the operating room. It makes it a lot easier for me to see, even though I have corrective vision that makes my vision perfect. A larger image still makes it easier. That means I don't have to move the monitor super close to me to be able to see the details. And it's just much more ergonomic in my mind. So that's another nice feature of the processor. It seems to be pretty well integrated. I don't know the cost of the device. I'm sure through contracting, you can drive the cost down. But so far on first impression, I like it. So far, my favorite. Now for that nine millimeter stone that I treated recently, the stone actually up on stent placement several weeks ago, the stone had been pushed into the kidney into one of the, thankfully, one of the upper pole calyces. 
The stone was st sitting there. It's not a big capacious calyx. So I could use the thulium fiber in a dusting setting and really just finely dust that stone. Most of the fragments are in the calyx. What is really cool is that once I saw that the stones have been fragmented, I removed the 365 micron thulium laser, allowing me the full diameter of the 3.6 French working channel. I was then able to use this suction and selectively move the scope to where the fragments are and suck out the fine, fine dust, making it much less likely for the patient to form another stone through a small nidus that was left, left in the kidney. So that's a nice feature of the scope. Yes, I used an access sheet, so the intrarenal pressure, you don't really have to worry about it too much, but while you're lasering, if you're worried about intrarenal pressure, you can certainly hook this up to a suction and press this button. It'll decrease the intrarenal pressure and actually it'll collapse the calyx in which you're working. So a nice feature, ergonomically, it's pretty good in my hands. Again, seven and a half surgical glove size hands and it fits my hands really, really, really well. I l I'm looking forward to using this more and more in my future cases. I would love to hear what you think. What is your current favorite disposable single use ureter scope? What have you tried? What you like about your prior scopes and what you like about your current scope, what you don't like about your current scope, let me know in the comments below. And for those of you who have ownership in a surgery center, make sure that you are dictating in your operative report the transitional pass-through code, I believe is C1747. It is actually a code that you can use in your surgery center if you own surg a surgery center this code will allow reimbursement by Medicare and maybe certain payers so that the cost of the scope is a pass-through charge. You're not losing money on the use as a scope. You're not having to use your reusable, reusable scope and risk damage to that reusable scope. Anyway, as usual, Thank you so much for the privilege of your time. Please take care of yourself and each other, and I look forward to hearing from you. Bye-bye.